Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. And welcome to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. I'd like you to be part of the program. Call 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Our phone number, one 855 400 7282. Don't forget our website, michaelsavage.com, where you can now pre order. It's available now to order Countdown to Mecca by Michael Savage. Now, it's not available until May 12th, but you can order it right now at the website, michaelsavage.com. Well, Monday will be the running of the Boston Marathon. And headlines coast to coast. Parents of boy killed in Boston bombing oppose the death penalty for Jokar Sanea. Now, for the last few months, Bill and Denise Richard have let the government use the death of their son, just eight-year-old Martin Richard. He was used to drive home the heinous, depraved nature of the bombing of the 2013 Boston Marathon. New York Times with the story. He was family. He was with his family, just eight years old, cheering on the runners. And then you see the video. Joe Carsonea, one of the two brothers, standing there for four minutes before the bomb went off, killing little Martin Richard. Government showcased Martin's death, opening and closing argument that just took place where he was found guilty. Now they're moving into the penalty phase. And on the table... What does the government want? Death. Death penalty for the remaining Boston bomber. If you remember, he ran over his brother who had a shootout with police. But during the course of the trial, now prosecutors put Bill Richard on the stand. They had the medical examiner describe excruciating detail what the bomb did to his son, little eight-year-old Martin Richard. They showed the jury the burned clothes Martin had been wearing. And now as the government prepares to make its case why the Boston bomber should be put to death, the Richard family says it has had enough. In an open letter to the Department of Justice, the Richards asked the government, stop seeking the death penalty. We're in favor, would support taking it off the table. Now this is the parents of the youngest victim, the little eight-year-old boy. Let's go back. This was the reaction outside of court with other victims, family members of victims, when the jury came back with the guilty verdict. I don't believe that there will ever be justice brought to this, no matter if he does get the death penalty or he remains in prison for the rest of his life. I do believe, however, that he should be held accountable for his actions, and I'm very thankful for each of the jury members that are making him do that. Carmen Ortiz, you know, U.S. Attorney, District of Massachusetts, gave no indication that the government would drop the death penalty. She said she discussed the case confidentially, scores of victims and survivors, listened to all their views on it, but the parents of little Martin Richard, who basically was the focal point during the course of the government's case, They are arguing, saying that they cannot move ahead with their lives with their two remaining children if the defendant continues to be in the news. I want to talk about this and take your phone calls on it at 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Because those who were against the death penalty are already calling out that here you have the parents of the youngest victim. And now they're opposed to the death penalty. I'll tell you why I believe they should go ahead with it. Number one, no one can relate to what those parents feel like. But this was an attack on all of us. This was an attack. The Boston bombing was a terrorist attack on the entire nation. Now, if you are one of those people that is against the death penalty, and they're going to point to the fact that the parents are against it, I will give you a chance to make your argument. 
this afternoon on the Savage Nation. Just dial us up. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Think of in, in, in 9-11, during 9-11. If one of the hijackers had lived, somehow, down at ground zero, if one of those hijackers had lived, I would say, my view would be, that the penalty should be death. That they have forfeited the right. It was an attack on the entire country. They have forfeited the right to now exist in the world. And I think the only appropriate penalty should be death. Now, what if you had people on 9-11 saying, listen, my family was sacrificed. My family, I lost a family member. I am against the death penalty. I don't think we can take the parents' feelings into account here. I feel awful what happened with the Richards. And they, they, they lost mightily with the loss of their little eight-year-old son, Martin Richard, who the government did use in the case. At the, the very end, jurors were sobbing and openly crying in court as they were watching the video and hearing the nature of that little boy and how he died. But at the same time, all right, the fact that they're against it. What about other survivors? What about family members of other victims? I don't, I don't think we can just say that because they're against it, because they're against the death penalty, that now we should wipe it off the table. I think, you know, the problem here is now this will be a rallying cry for maybe those more liberal, and of course in Massachusetts, highly liberal, and they're going to be arguing that maybe, in fact, now he should not get the, the death penalty. Should the government hold firm? Should the government go ahead with the death penalty for the Boston bomber? 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Remember, our website is michaelsavage.com. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. And again, it, it's it's horrendous what happened to this little boy. It's horrendous what these parents have had to go through. And now the parents have written an open letter because this is all going to take place next week. This is when the penalty phase comes into play. And Monday will be the running of the Boston Marathon. And now this is going to be what people are now going to be talking about. And they're going to be using the fact that the parents are against it. That the parents of the little boy who was really used to persuade the jury, they're going to be using that, that now he should not be given the death penalty. But like I said, this was not just they. They're not the only ones that lost. This was, in fact, an attack on everybody. This was an attack on the country. This was an attack on the United States. This is not just that their son was the victim of a crime. This is not just a murder that was perpetrated. This was a terrorist act that those two terrorists, those two brothers carried out where they killed the three at the marathon. Then they killed a security guard. What was their plan? They had carjacked a car. They had planned to go to Times Square, New York, where they were going to set off more pressure cooker bombs. Their goal was to kill Americans. Their crime was against all Americans. The youngest victim happened to be the eight-year-old boy, Martin Richard. The fact that maybe his parents have always been against the death penalty. So the fact that they lost their son has no bearing on that. But I don't think we can allow that to come into play. I believe that the government has to go forward with the plan. This was a, a murderous, cowardly terrorist act, and the Boston bomber deserves the death penalty, even if all of the family members of the victims come forward, even if all the family members say that they are against the death penalty. That is the penalty. And maybe they have been through a lot. And you know what? There's something wrong with the process. 
that it takes this long. And I agree that he is going to be in the headlines as he and his cohorts and sympathizers try to fight him getting the death penalty. It shouldn't take too, so long as, as long as it does when you have these people sitting on death row. But I think he does deserve the, the, the death penalty as opposed to what? Sitting in a federal prison somewhere with other terrorists and hanging out with them or then being a hero online or being a, a martyr to people who can send a mail or he'll get Christmas cards or women that will write to him or other people that will send him letters of support. No, the government needs to go ahead and give the Boston bomber the death penalty. Even though now the liberal media like the New York Times and the Boston Globe are running with the story that his parents have sent a letter saying that they are against him from receiving the death penalty. Our number 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and this is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in. For Dr. Michael Savage, remember our website, michaelsavage.com. This is a national story. This is terrorism. This is an attack on the country. And whether or not we're going to allow, whether it be political correctness or liberal influence, to somehow override and decide whether or not we're a nation of laws. New York Post headline. New York Times headline. ABC headline. NBC headline. Parents of boy killed in Boston bombing now oppose the death penalty for the Boston bomber. I sympathize with the parents of the youngest victim, but I believe, no, the government should go forward. This was an act of terrorism against the United States, not just the little boy and his family. Let's go out to line five, Annie is listening on WABC in New York. Annie, you're up first on the Savage Nation. Hello, Annie. Hello. Thank you, John. Um, I agree with you totally about the uh, death penalty. Um, they convicted him. He's guilty. And uh, uh, the, the whole problem is we can't wait 25 years while all the appeals go through and more lawyers get involved and we can't do this and we can't do that. Let's do it uh, within the month, you know. Let's uh, do it and do it quickly. And uh, next we can go to Hassan over there in Fort Hood and, and uh, do the right thing by him. Annie, not only that, but Annie, what if a President Obama, or maybe not him, but someone like him, or some other liberal progressive politician, what if then going down the line they start to pardon some of these terrorists what if they decide the way you know they oh we have to close club gitmo and what if eventually see to me that's the real uh difficulty that you have to watch out for is i believe the way the country is headed at some point there would be some liberal politician who would then call to let these people go don't you agree He's letting them go anyway. I mean, it's almost empty right now. The politicians are going down to Cuba. What are they uh, going to get condos at Gitmo? What is uh, the, they're rushing over to Cuba like, uh, you know, it's uh, the new land of opportunity. I, I say keep Gitmo open and make it uh, for the politicians too, like uh, Pelosi and uh, Cuomo, who went down there, you know, just to scout out the area. What are they doing? Trying to buy their new uh, condominiums down there and make it a new. Uh, Miami Beach. What is the problem with these people let, thinking let, that? Let, uh, all right, let's keep it on this though. Thank you for the call, Annie. One eight five five four hundred Savage. One eight five five four hundred seven eight two seven two eight two. What if the family member of someone who is a, a victim of terrorism suddenly steps forward and says, "I'm against the death penalty"? Should we cave to their wishes? Ted on line two is calling from WJR in Detroit. Ted, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Uh, 
Yeah, I believe that there's a certain amount of satisfaction in him getting a life sentence. Preferably, he'd ride on death row. But his whole thing is to be a martyr. And uh, he's, you know, he sees some satisfaction in that. So if he has to sit in jail for the rest of his life, I didn't know that he might get the kind of treatment you were saying earlier. You know, as far as being a hero, I didn't think of that. But uh, the fact that he would not be able to have the satisfaction of being a martyr might be a nice thing. Yeah, but, I, you know, thank you for the call, Ted. But what about the fan mail they get? What about the fact of how their privileges keep getting extended? What about the fact that, you know, you have these nuts that write to these people in jail? Don't you agree? Listen, this was an act of terrorism. Less is listening to, uh, is on uh, line seven, listening to WABC. Les, you're next up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Les. Yes, sir. He took a life. A life must be taken. He earned a paycheck. That paycheck is he took a life. A life must be taken. Until this nation starts learning the purpose of justice, nothing will ever change. It's time we carry out justice. If I were the judge, I would ignore the families and say, unfortunately, you earned a paycheck. I'm not a cheat. I'm going to pay you. You've earned the death penalty by taking a life. Your life must be taken. This is unfortunate, but that is justice. I Thank you for the call, Les. I agree. Let's go to line three. Barbara is in Connecticut listening on WDRC. Barbara, you're up next. This is John DePietro sitting in on the Savage Nation. Hello, Barbara. Hi, John. I think that there are three things that could happen here. He could re- get clemency from Obama, which would be horrific. He could also marry when he's in prison and, and foster ch- have, fire children, which uh, I believe Ted Bundy was allowed to do. Um, and- I agree with you on clemency from Obama. one 855 This is John DePietro sitting in. From Michael Savage, and this is the Savage Nation. This is the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, inviting you to be part of the program. You can just call up and dial 1 855 400 Savage. 1 855 400 7282. Don't forget, visit our website. It's michaelsavage.com. And remember, right now, you can pre order. The book, the new book coming out from Dr. Savage, Countdown to Mecca. It's available right now. You can order it online at michaelsavage.com. It doesn't come out till May 12th. Perfect for Mother's Day. Go to the website, order Countdown to Mecca. Well, not only does the war on terrorism continue, but the story that was on the Drudge Report. How about cameras placed along the Texas 12 hundred mile border with Mexico have captured the stream of illegal immigrants sneaking into the country on a daily basis network of more than 1,000 motion detectors similar to those used to film wildlife have been placed strategically in areas that have not been secured where Mexican citizens can cross and evade capture with ease They helped border guards apprehend nearly 30,000 suspects, led to, ready for this, 88,400 pounds of drugs being seized as part of Operation Drawbridge. And if you could see some of the, the photos, folks, I mean, strolling across the border, drugs, guns, no one speaks out about it, daily basis coming across like they're going for a stroll we're the leaders to speak out against it and we're the leaders that continue and need to speak out against terrorism on the country big story this hour is the parents of the youngest victim of the boston marathon bombing have spoken out saying that they are against the death penalty for the boston bomber should that have any impact on the government going forward in the penalty phase to give the death penalty to Joe Carsonaya. I feel for the, the parents, the Richards, losing their eight, little eight-year-old son, but I don't think it can because, as I said, I don't you view this was an attack on everyone. It happened to kill the victims that it did. It's horrific. 
It's terrible. I think in their name, we need to go ahead with justice. one 855 400 But as, as you can imagine, you're going to have the people that are against the death penalty now using this as a rallying cry. Chris on line two is calling, listening on WJR. Chris, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Chris. All right. Uh, my whole thought on death penalty is that they have never convicted an innocent person uh, before, but it is a fallible system that is not imperfect. And you kill somebody, you can't take that back. You can't pardon someone after you kill them. But Chris, in this situation, Chris, number one, we know it is definitely this person. And Chris, you know, number two, you can't name in the last 50 years, unless you want to try, name for me one person that then after they were put to to death, we learned that we put to death the wrong person, right? Okay. We know for sure that he did it. Where they see, they showed us the camera footage before and after the explosion. So where's the camera footage of him dropping the backpack and then walking away? All we ever see is that he's there. You you have some doubt as to whether or not he was part of the bombing? I, I think he was a patsy. I, I really do. There was a lot of weird stuff that happened that day, and everybody needs to go to Infowars.com. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, he he in no way, uh, where Chris is incorrect, at no point has he even tried to say that he didn't do it. As a matter of fact, they even admitted he did it. And instead, he, they said he was just under the influence of his brother in launching this terrorist attack. Line five, Craig is listening on KWQW in Des Moines. Craig, you're up next. This is John DePietro on the Savage Nation. Hello, Craig. Yeah, hi. Thanks, John. I'd give these parents any opinion they want, uh, but that shouldn't have any bearing on what we do with terrorists. These people have declared war on us. We're not smart enough to declare war back on on these people. If this was a war under Geneva Convention rules and things, we'd take people like this, after we got the information out of them, non-uniformed soldiers, and we'd put them up against the wall and shoot them. And, And we really should do that. This probably is what should have happened at Gitmo. Take them somewhere, get the information we need, and very quietly just get rid of them. Don't give them the attention they want. Don't give them this big platform to spew right. their Islamic or whatever hatred well, you, is. You know what, Craig? Almost like, thank you for the call, Craig. Almost like, look look what they did with Obama, which was, I mean, not, not Obama, excuse me, with Osama bin Laden, where right after they took him out, they then immediately then, you know, dumped him at sea with what they did with Osama bin Laden. So I, I, I agree. In that, and now, in this case, they can't do that. Uh, certainly, I mean, the circumstances are night and day, went through the whole trial. I mean, it, w- it wasn't even that necessary to me. But I, I, I think you're going to see more of this coming forth in, in the country. And, and in their mind, these parents, they feel that they their life won't be able to go on until until this guy is then just drops out of the news. But I don't think he would then go out of the news. Marcus is on line eight, listening on WMAL in Washington. Marcus, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Marcus. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hey, I'd like to um, just agree with you about this particular crime has not only affected that family who lost their son, and I sympathize with them, but it affects everybody. And I don't believe that they, look, they have the right to voice their opinion in this particular case, of course. But to push for to, to push to change something like this to say we shouldn't uh, execute this individual they don't get that luxury to take away a tool that the criminal justice system has set up to deal with people who murder others in this case terrorists they don't have that luxury to do that and they then their opinion should be taken obviously but should carry no weight in regards to how the law is enforced and the and the death penalty is used. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you very much, Marcus. Folks, 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. What about people in the New York region? What if there had been one or two of the hijackers that had survived on September 11th? Somehow, some kind of a miracle would they survive? And then what about if family members of some of the victims of September 11th came forward. 
and said, or even the Pentagon, and said, you know, I, I'm just against the death penalty. I think we should spare them. Again, I, I agree with what Marcus said. Yeah, their opinion can, they can certainly weigh in on it, but I, I don't think it's the same as when you have a murder trial and then you have the victim impact statement. I view these acts of, of terrorism as it's, it's an act against all of us. And that's why then I think that it, it comes down that way. So let's go to line six. Gino is listening on WABC in New York. Gino, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Gino. The supreme hypocrites in the media and the extreme left-wing maggots who would have spared the life of Mumia, the cop killer in Philadelphia, because he supposedly reformed his life while he was on death row, they're the same mongrels who also want Zernayev and his other filthy brother who, in my humble opinion, committed an act against humanity. They wanted to murder as many innocent human beings and as many innocent Americans as they could because of their political philosophy. It all is the same. They make martyrs out of killers, and we have thousands of convicted killers walking the streets of my Bronx and Brooklyn, where I served as a probation officer years ago, because they're allowed to plead guilty to lesser offenses, lesser degrees of homicide. And what do these people do when they get out? They go and do what's natural for them. They go out and kill and kill again. That's right. Thank you for the call, Gino. And folks, how many times do you, t- I don't know about you, I am tired of seeing, you know, how many years later now we're still seeing interviews of Charles Manson, who with sick, some sick individuals becomes like a cult-like figure of t-shirts and everything else on the internet or just you know sold on the internet and i think that's what would happen with someone like this line one evie is listening on ksfo in san francisco evie this is john DePietro, and you're up next on the savage nation hi yes i thank you for bringing up the point that i don't believe that these people believed originally in the death penalty. In fact, I I would be positive they don't. And the second point is that I love the way the call before the call before said it. He said the criminal justice system, I wrote it down, is set up that the jury said that the death penalty would be okay. And that's why he has to be given the death penalty. He had a trial by jury. We know that he did it, contrary to what that other man said. And that's why it has to happen. And you're right also about the fact that they people keep calling in and saying, well, they'll make them martyrs if you kill them. They make them martyrs anyway. People- that's right. That is. Thank you for the call, Evie. You're exactly right. Hey, look, at, at least Timothy McVeigh, we don't have to hear any more about him. It's not like there's a recent interview that he's doing. What do you think? One eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. Don't you regard an act of terrorism as it's an act against all of us? And again, of course, you, f- you feel horrible for the family. I understand they feel well. It'll continue to be in the news because of then trying to fight it, and then when he's finally put to death. But th- there's no guarantee anyway. Let's go to line five. John is listening on WABC in New York. John, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Yes, uh, I lost my niece on September 11th, and what I think should happen with this family is they should be executed, just like you said before, with Tim McVeigh. They execute them. You don't hear about them anymore. And the bottom line is you don't put them in jail with the what they say with the yeah, the possibility of parole someday you'll get a liberal that'll be sitting in the White House who who pardon them and say hey he was there for sixty years let's let him go that's right now John did you say your niece was killed on September 11th my niece her name was Michelle Henrique twenty seven years old and it never goes away it never goes away so if they took this guy out and executed him. That's just punishment for what he did. Where, where was she on September 11th? What's that? Where was she? She was on the 97th floor. She worked for a fiduciary trust. She never knew what hit her. I spoke to her that morning. She was fine. She said the other building got hit. She was on her way out. People, when people, She told people when I called her that the building had gotten hit. She, there was the other building, Uncle John. She told people they were fortunate enough to get out, and she wasn't. 
And John, what if just some somehow one of those hijackers had survived that crash or somehow survived? Would would, would you? How would you have felt? Would you have felt that he that person deserved to get the get the death penalty? Absolutely. That attack was a, an attack against this country, and that's an act of war. And when you have an act of war, you have to do what's, what, what the Articles of War call for, and that's kill the enemy. We're their enemy, and they're ours. And this, this young fella with his mother over in Russia saying they set him up, I mean, it did, these, are, these are lunatics. These people are fanatics. They're not going to stop. If you put him in jail, why give him the opportunity to turn around and maybe kill a prison guard who's right. in there uh, watching them and he turns around and he gets a shank and kills the uh, corrections officer. Why give them that opportunity? Why, why just not stop it and and put it away? Charles Manson, they should have executed him a long time ago, but yet we still hear about him. That's right. John, you talked with your niece that morning right after the first plane had hit? I spoke to her two minutes after the first uh, plane hit. She was in the second building. And I called her because I, I had heard the news right away. And I spoke to her, and she was fine. She she was such a good kid. She cared so much about other people. And she uh, went in to get her boss, and her boss was an elderly guy. She was an executive secretary, and she was es- escorting him out of the building. People saw her leaving. They made it. She didn't. She was probably on her way down when the when the building got hit. And, you know, they did find a piece, and... I went to the uh, museum, and, and and when they built the museum, they did a lot of good things, but then they put a section where they praise Al-Qaeda. They have pictures hmm. of the hijackers, Osama bin Laden. Yeah. They don't belong there. No, no. They do not belong there. Why enshrine them so, so some uh, fanatic Muslim yep. can walk in there and praise them? Yeah. They shouldn't be praised. They should be cursed, because yep. they're in hell. You're exactly right, John. Thank you for the call. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. We'll continue on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You're listening to the Savage Nation. Our phone number 1-855-400-SAVAGE. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Terry on Line 7 is listening on WVNN in Alabama. Hello, Terry. Hi, how are you? Very well. Go right ahead, Terry. Yeah, I, I honestly, I think the death penalty is too good for people like this. I wish they'd come up with something worse than the death penalty. It almost seems too easy. And we certainly don't want him going to jail because people like him, they convert other people in there who don't have a way forward in life, and then they all get out, and the next thing they want to do is they all want to cause harm to the U.S. A lot of people getting converted to Islam while in jail. That is exactly right, Terry. And on top of that, Listen, it just stays uh, in the news. He stays alive. He's able to correspond with different people. Talking about the Boston bomber con- continues to then hang out with other terrorists. I, I mean, it, what are the options? One is the death penalty, and then the other option is you allow them to remain. And who knows? Maybe someday they get pardoned. One eight five five four hundred Savage. Don't forget our website. It's michaelsavage.com where you can pre-order Countdown to Mecca. John DePietro in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, 
culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're welcome to call the program 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Don't forget, visit our website. It's michaelsavage.com. And, of course, for the latest news and headlines. And don't forget, the countdown is on. The new novel, Countdown to Mecca, coming soon, available for pre-order online right now at michaelsavage.com. You know, headlines right now, we have been talking about the fact that the parents of the youngest victim of the Boston bomber are now speaking out, saying that they're against the death penalty that they don't want the Boston bomber, Shokar Senea, put to death. I disagree with that. I disagree with that because this was an act of terrorism against all Americans, not just a crime against their family, all due respect, or the little boy, their son, eight-year-old Martin Richard, and the same thing with terrorist attack, whether it be on September 11th in New York or in the Pentagon. If family members... Of those victims stepped forward and said, I don't want the death penalty for these people. I think the rule of law overrules that, and I think we have to follow it. But another story that, and I would like women to call in, especially on this story. And it's the story you hear about, but the issue of pay inequality was brought up. And I I think this is so offensive in a way president obama now many times keep in mind many times people are serious but then they say something in jest but this notion that when they're talking about pay inequality that michelle obama the first lady somehow should be getting paid and obsessed about that let's hear this is president obama talking about pay inequality and that Michelle Obama should be getting a big paycheck. Paying women the same as men for doing the same job, that's not hard. <laughs> that's not hard. And, and it's not a women's issue. As I said uh, yesterday, uh, right now Michelle's not getting paid anything. <laughs> and she points that out. <laughs> how, how is that possible the president goes on to talk about that right now let's say the next cut that there is an equal pay in the white house but before we got to the white house when she was working i wanted her to get paid the same as a man did because if she was getting paid that that money accrued to our account just as her expenses accrued to our account so there's a family issue should the first lady, should Michelle Obama be getting a paycheck? One, eight five five, four hundred savage Think of how she travels. Think of how much it costs when she travels somewhere. What about doing the right thing? So now, like, it's not enough to have the honor of being the first lady. It's not enough that you get to live in the White House. It's not enough that you're experiencing something that no one else would be experiencing. But it's the, the harp on. That's their idea of pay inequality. Is that your idea of pay inequality? That is not pay inequality. The first lady of the United States, that, that somehow the first lady should be getting paid. Or on your state and local level, you know, if the governor is a woman, should her husband, if she's married to a man, should he be getting paid? Or, you know, if the governor happens to be a man should the first lady of that particular state whatever state texas or florida or california be paid michelle obama there, there's something there that they're joking about it that then must actually be discussed with the obamas feel that she does a lot and should be paid never mind he was the candidate he's the one as president getting what four hundred thousand a year and that's not enough the honor of being the first lady the honor to have her causes go forward whatever it may be health child obesity state dinners at the white house 
that somehow that is not enough for the first family. What do you think? I would like to hear, especially right now, if you're a woman, pick up the phone. Humor me. 1-855-400-7282. Don't you think? I think that's insulting. I think if, if you're a woman or a single mom or someone struggling to get by, working two, three jobs, and there's Michelle Obama entertaining Beyonce, Jay-Z in the White House, traveling all over the world, and somehow in her mind, you know, this isn't fair. I'm not being paid. The president gets paid, but I'm not getting paid. So we'll take your phone calls on that. Now, in regards to this business of terrorism and the Boston bomber, let's go to line nine. Patrick is listening on WMAL in Washington. Patrick, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Patrick. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? Very well. Go right ahead, Patrick. Well, I want I want to start with saying I'm an Iraq and Afghanistan veteran. I lost a friend in 9/11 at the Pentagon, and I am a Christian. So you got to know those three things about me before you hear my opinion, because I am for and against the death penalty, and I'll tell you why. I know what it feels like to have that anger towards the terrorists, and they are terrorists. This guy is a terrorist. You take out all the emotion and use the letter of the law, the letter of the law calls for him to be executed. Just plain and simple. Now, and I, and I also love how you respectfully disagree with the parents of the child. That, that is awesome. You know, people, some people may speak out against the parents, but you respectfully disagree, and that, that shows a lot for your character. Thank you, Patrick. But, the, you know, I, I, and I know what it feels like to pull the trigger on somebody. And it's easy to say, yeah, give him the death penalty. He needs to die. But it's, it, it's, it's a different story when you're the one pulling that trigger. Yep. So that's where emotion comes in, into play, where we don't need that in the letter of the law. So with that said, he deserves to die. That's I my, think so. My, you know, as an American, as a patriot, you know, they wage war on us. And we have waged war, uh, contrary to the, the previous caller, we have waged war on the terrorists. But the problem is... The bureaucrats in Washington on both sides of the aisle won't let us wage that war. Correct. Right. Patrick, now, thank, right now? Nope, you're exactly right. Thank you for the call. Let's go to Gina on line two, listening in Kansas on KINA. Gina, this is John DePietro. You're up on the Savage Nation. Gina, should Michelle Obama be, should she be getting a paycheck for being first lady? Uh, heck no. I mean, I know that she thinks that she's done a lot for our country, but um, really, in retrospect, she hasn't done anything good for our country. And besides that, even if she was, it, historically, the First Lady, her, it's her job to give her sacrifice uh, to the to the country. Her husband is getting paid for his job. Um, it, it's her role to be a supporting part of the marriage and part of the job, but, but not to get paid for it. Um, I, don't you don't you think, Gina? Isn't that real nerve? I mean, you have someone. Think of what it costs when she's traveled abroad. Think of everything. You know, your meals are paid for. Your health care is paid for. Uh, you know, the husband obviously gets the the type of protection the president gets. And and in her mind, like, I, don't you want to bet, Gina, that this is something they actually talk about? And I'll bet that she actually complains about that she is not getting paid as first lady. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, this is all her. This is all her, you know. She's pulling some strings, you know. You bet she is. Um, this is all her, and I think he, it, it, it's not surprising, and it's not unlike Obama to, to want to take more money out of our pocket. Yes. Thank you for the call, Gina. So if this means that Hillary Clinton becomes the next president, that what? Bill Clinton should be paid to be the first gentleman? I think this is real nerve. Can we hear that cut again, Jim? Now, again, I always think that a lot of times things are said in jest. But you be the judge. Doesn't this sound to you like something that the first couple have discussed? And I'll bet that Michelle Obama, this must be something that she complains about, that despite, you know, Air Force One and they live in the White House, travel all over the world, everything you could ever want, staff waiting on you, it irks her that she's not receiving a paycheck. Let's say the president again. Paying women the same as men for doing the same job, that's not hard. <laughs> that's not hard. And, and it's not a women's issue. As I said uh, yesterday, uh, right now, Michelle's not getting paid anything. 
And she points that out. I mean, that is like, don't you think, I think that's real, that this is, I, I wouldn't even think of that. So she gets, she complains, you know, yes, she got to travel uh, wherever, but, you know, I didn't get paid for it. Where everything is paid. one 855 400 Savage. one 855 Linda on line five is listening in Michigan on WJR. Linda, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Yes, I would just like to say that, number one, I did not vote for Michelle Obama. And if she doesn't like it and wants to moan and groan about it, get out of the White House. Go. I'd be happy to see both of them go because I think <laughs> what a Mr. Obama does is everything intended. Michael Savage pointed it out in a piece uh, a few weeks ago that everything's in the name. And if you think about it and you watch, it's gotten much worse with the Obamas currently, and it's going to get much, much worse before he leaves office. Yes. Michelle Obama should not get a penny from us. She lives in the lap of luxury. Yep. Linda, thank you for the call. Can you imagine there's a state dinner and someone says, wow, Michelle, that is really incredible and your dress and got to meet the heads of state. And then she looks at you and says, yeah, and I was doing it for free. Line three is Annie listening on WMAL in our nation's capital. Annie, this is John DePietro. You're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Annie. Yes, sir. I got an opinion. All right. I think that they're asking for too much. They get too much, and I wish they'd hurry up and get out of the White House because we need somebody in there like Hillary that will do us right. <laughs> You're a big Hillary supporter, Annie? Yeah, but I don't vote, so I just, I, but I would like to see her in there because I know that Clinton helped her, and she, he'll, uh, they'll, be the, they'll be just great when they get in there. <laughs> I don't know about that. We'll talk about that coming up, though. one 400 savage Hillary has a challenger now. With uh, Lincoln Chafee. We'll play some of that coming up as well. 1 855 400 7282. The website is michaelsavage.com. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and this is The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800 B U I C O I N. But before we got to the White House, when she was working, I wanted her to get paid the same as a man did. Because if she was getting paid, that, that money accrued to our account. Just as her expenses accrued to our account. So there's a family issue. That is President Obama. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in. For Michael Savage, if you'd like to call into the program, 1-855-400-SAVAGE is the phone number, 1-855-400-7282. President Obama, pretending he's joking around, talking about pay inequality, but actually bringing up something that it sounds like they talk about in the White House, and that is, should Michelle Obama be paid to be First Lady? That never occurred to me. He ran... Everything is paid for with them. As one of the callers said, they do live in the lap of luxury. Everywhere they travel, every meal, everything is paid for. And you get the sense that, what, behind the scenes, that's not enough, that she's actually complaining about this? Can you imagine the nerve and the gall? How was the trip to pick a country? Well, you know, I'm not getting paid to do this. State dinner tonight? Heads of state, well, you know, be time and a half if I was punching the old clock here at the way. I mean, the, the absolute gall and nerve for these people, they, they have no, no bounds at all. Zero class to be joking about this. What do you think? Let's go out to line one. Jim is listening on WABC in New York. Jim, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Jim. Hi, I have two concepts. I'll save the second one. In case, if you, if you don't just connect me, I'll tell you about the second one. But the first one, we should expand this idea about Mrs. Obama being paid. And it occurs to me, maybe it occurs to you, that their product is words. It's either spoken words or written words. That's what both her and her husband produce, words. The words are valueless 
unless there's some audience to listen to and to read the words. Therefore, the audience should participate in this revenue stream. I should be paid if I'm going to listen to what she or her husband has to say. No. No, no one should be paid. And starting with Michelle Obama, can you imagine the nerve of, of the things they get to go to and travel? And somehow she's got, what, a chip on her shoulder because she's not being paid? Let's go to line seven. Lisa is listing in Kansas City on KCMO. Lisa, hello. This is John DePietro, and you're on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, Lisa. Um, Michelle Obama has like 23 people who work for her. The top paid are way over $100,000. Um, Hillary had three, but the rest of our first ladies only had one person that worked for them. And um, Mamie Eisenhower paid hers out of her husband's salary. So this is not fair. Where does she get off? You know, Lisa, I think this does come into the fact of who they interact with. And, you know, they, they see the Kardashians making all this money on their reality shows and this other stuff and they see Beyonce and and I think in Michelle Obama's mind she feels like hey listen I'm a bigger celebrity than they are and I should be making the kind of money and paydays that they're making but you know it it, it never they, these these people thank you for the call Lisa they never cease to amaze me think of, of of the experience they have the opportunity they have you represent the United States you're the first lady but behind the scenes Michelle Obama? Is she she's complaining about not getting paid? Am I missing something? Do you what do you think? Should she be getting paid? Michelle Obama? 1-855-400 Savage. 1-855-400-7282. Welcome back and take your calls on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400 Savage. 855-400-7282. Malia start their careers. The idea that they'd be treated differently as somebody's sons is unacceptable. That is President Obama. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You can call into the program 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Our website is is michaelsavage.com for the latest news and headlines and also your opportunity to order Countdown to Mecca, the new novel coming soon, available for pre-order right now. It will be available on May 15th. You can order it right now at michaelsavage.com. You know, it's amazing the way these people think. And as far as these people, I mean the far left especially the Obamas. This was supposed to be talk of pay inequality. And the president starts talking about the fact. And I, I have to think, you know how a lot of times people say things in jest, but then you find out it is really something that's been bothering them or they've been discussing. And, and apparently one of the things that the Obamas have been discussing is the fact that Michelle Obama doesn't get paid to be the first lady. And they somehow think she should be paid. To be the first lady. I that would never I would never even think of something like that. Everything you could ever want is right there. You're the first lady living in the White House, traveling the world, and that's not enough. State dinners, trips, Olympics, whatever it may be, never enough. I think it comes down to the celebrity factor where they see, whether it be a Beyonce or the Kardashians that make huge amounts of money. And the fact, can you imagine this was even discussed, the moaning and the groaning, ah, no pay to have to go to, you know, the White House egg hunt or whatever they're doing. It, it's just, I, I think it's real gall and nerve. And the fact that when he mentions his daughters, well, of course they should be paid the same as a male, unless they end up, you know, marrying someone who runs for office or some line of work. And then that would fall into them what do you think let's go to line one suzanne is listening huntsville alabama on wvnn suzanne you're up on the savage nation hello suzanne hi nice to talk with you thank you suzanne uh, i have a quick comment and my comment would be that our military wives should get paid before michelle obama should get a penny 
That is exactly right, Suzanne. I mean, think of them making the argument. That, you know, Suzanne, that's sacrifice. That's real sacrifice. Do the Obamas, Suzanne, is Michelle Obama really have to sacrifice? You could say privacy for the girls or privacy the amount of time. But you, you tell me, Suzanne, who sacrifices more, Michelle Obama or military wives? Michelle Obama has no idea what our military wives go through or our military families. And I would take it a step farther and say that civil servants, Congress, Senate, the president, their pay should be in correlation to what the military earns, the same with their benefits. That is exactly right. Thank you for the call, Suzanne. Let's go to line five. Ralph is listening on WABC in New York. Ralph, this is John DePietro. You're up next on The Savage Nation. Well, John, the, the president is very, very clever in the way he uh, he veils this proposal in jest. I mean, he's he's an expert, a master at this, and he's brought to, and you, you hit it on the button before when you said they've talked about this, they've spoken about it, it's been discussed, he, he, he brought it out in very veiled fashion, and we just get a little taste now, and so it's in the public's mind. And, you know, as we sit and wait for this, these, these horrendous, horrendous eight-year period to, to end, these people have never um, adhered to any kind of tradition. They've, they've never been uh, what you would call, they've never um, taken the, the way we do things here and, uh, and run with it. They don't know how to do that. So does it, in the long run, John, does this really surprise you that they would go in this direction? Nothing they, would, nothing they do in their minds is beyond contempt. They will say or do anything just to, give, just to see how far they can push the envelope, John. You're right. And Ralph, can you imagine, I mean, now you look in, no wonder he's always on the golf course. No wonder he's always traveling. No wonder they go on different planes, even though, you know, they're going to be in California on the same day. Who, Ralph, can you imagine who would want to listen to her complaining and going on and on about the fact that she's not getting paid, that Michelle Obama is upset that she's not getting paid as first lady. And Ralph, can you imagine them having the conversation of, you know, Hillary might be the next president, who knows, but then Michelle Obama, oh yeah, she's going to get paid. And Beyonce gets paid. And uh, and and the Kardashians get paid. But no, 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 I have to do this for free. Ralph, it never occurred to me, just the sheer nerve, gall, un- ungratefulness, ingratitude. I mean, I th- this is... I can't even, Ralph, can you imagine, this is another level. I would never think this is the type of thing that they're upset about. Well, do you know that they don't think the way you and I think because they've, they've succeeded in doing things the way they've done it. They've, they've, they've pulled the wool over, over this country's eyes to such a fa- I mean, to such an extent. Now, hear, hear this, John. You get these, you, you uh, feel these wonderful calls from all, the, all these wonderful women around the country, and they, they, of course, agree because they're logical and they live the life every day. They understand. But I'm telling you, from my part of the country, if you polled the, the women here on the East Coast, especially here, in the, in the five boroughs in New York City, there, you may get many people that say, yes, she should be paid. Why not? <laughs> it's only fair. Women should get, get paid. This is a wonderful idea. You'd be surprised, John. Thank you. Thank you for the call, Ralph. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Should Michelle Obama get paid as first lady? This is what they're upset about. This is their idea of pay inequality what does a a single mom think who's working three jobs to keep it together this is why it's 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 they can't even enjoy the white house she's so upset about this a chip on her shoulder about it is this something other people has anyone ever seen her and said wow michelle obama she does all that work and all that traveling that's terrible she's doing it for free you get to be the first lady the absolute appalling gall now, to me, that that's no class. That is zero class if that's the type of thing that you're hung up on. Let's go to line two. Kathy is listening on WJR in Detroit. Kathy, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hi, John. Thanks for taking my call. You're very welcome. You know what? Uh, this is not a surprise that they would talk about this to me, but, you know, I don't know any anybody, any wife or husband that gets paid to do their spouse's job. Nobody to stay to do the other person's job. And as far as uh, worrying about keeping up with the Kardashians or Beyonce, um, if she wants to get hired or get paid to do a job like that, she can go talk to one of the studios and see if they'd like to pay her to 
put her life on TV, and then they can pay her to do that if they're interested. She's not a singer, as far as I know, and uh, or a football player or anything else uh, that the public has offered to pay tickets to come and, and watch. So I don't know why she's uh, kibitzing or, or, or whining about being paid. Well, and then even, thank you for the call, Kathy, even then sending him out where he starts talking about it. Donna on line one is listening on WABC in New York. Donna, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hi, yes. How are you doing? Thank you. Very well, Donna. Go right ahead. What do you think? I think she should. I think she should get paid. And why is that? I mean, it's not enough to be the first lady and live in the White House and... Everything you travel, eat, everything is all taken care of. Um, Representing the country, once-in-a-lifetime historical figure, that's not enough. She has to get a paycheck? She should. I am single my whole life, all right? When I was 22 years old, I worked at the United Nations, all right? Is this a long story? Ambassadors, dignitaries. Right now, I'm a writer, all right? I was making minimum wage. So if she wants to get paid, she wants to be around these dignitaries, she wants to travel, tell her to make minimum wage like the rest of the women. I, geez, I don't think, think, I thank you for the call. I don't think she needs to be, she should be, shouldn't be paid anything. I think this sounds like the high-priced athletes that complain about the simplest thing, complain that they have to stop and do an autograph. Complain that uh, you know the luggage is late. Complain that the the jet didn't have the type of uh, refreshments that they wanted. I I, I think it's a complete uh, element of just complete lack of respect for the for the role. Kevin on line eight is listening on WMAL in Washington D.C. Kevin, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Hey. I am an Afghanistan veteran. I will be turning 26 year old, 26 years old. And the thing that disgusts me the most is the amount of entitlement that not only the people, but that the president and first lady think they need. And they're not entitled to anything. They haven't earned it. And this is why I think that a requirement of being a president should be, you have to be a part of the military, at least reserve or something so that you can understand, and I agree with the previous caller that said that military wives should be paid if it's going to be something like that. I agree. My wife is former service as well. So we both understand. So when I deployed and did all that stuff, she knows what I have to go through. And this president and this administration has no clue, and they let stupid things like this come up and make national news. It's disgusting. Thank, thank you for the call, Kevin. Thank you for your service as well. Is, isn't that amazing that this, I get the feeling that this has been something in the background. This is something that's that's been discussed. And we all know, look at the amount of money that the Clintons have made since they left office. That Bill Clinton, maybe they had trouble getting a mortgage for that first house when they were leaving the White House. Look at how much now they command for a speech, for a book. The money is going to be there when you get out. But to now somehow try to make the case or complain that Michelle Obama should be getting paid. Think of, plus, you know, the mother's been living there with them. Plus, you know, friends. Just the amount of cost on travel alone. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Lawrence is listening on line nine on WMAL, and he's on the Savage Nation. Hello, Lawrence. Hey, John, you're doing a great job. Thank you, Lawrence. I'd like to point out uh, something different that uh, this trial balloon's been thrown out before, actually. Uh, remember when uh, uh, Bill was running for office and Hillary was going to be the wife? Uh, you're going to get a two for one. And, uh, and yeah, and how well did that work? I mean, you know, that whole thing went down in defeat. But say what you want. I mean, Hillary Clinton did come out, did run for, uh, you know, senator of, of New York, won, and then, be- you know, became secretary of state. And now she's going to run for president. Michelle Obama will have plenty of time if she wants to test the water and get out there and see if she can command an audience. And then she'll have plenty of earning power. But somehow, Lawrence... To completely overlook the fact, Lawrence, whatever happened to public service? Isn't that what they all talk about, their dedication to public service? 
Yeah, that was my uh, original point. But how about this? How about we pay Bill Clinton to be the wife of Hillary? Well, he's the husband of. Think of the guy. He's the husband, and then if she were to win, he would become the the first gentleman. But no, I don't think I don't think whoever that's the spouse is. I I don't think that they need to get paid. I think there's there's plenty of benefit in just being whether it be the first lady or if in some point it's it's the first gentleman. Becky on line seven calling from New Mexico on KKOB is up next on the Savage Nation. Hello, Becky. Hi. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Welcome. Absolutely not does Michelle Obama need to get paid. She's she's nothing but a rich, spoiled, and if she was a child, brat. She acts like it. She looks like it. She flaunts herself all over the TV shows. I'm sure she'd get something out of stuff. So what is the problem? I don't know. Thank you for the call, Becky. It's true. You do see or appear on a lot of uh, television programs. 1-855-400-SAVAGE is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in. For Dr. Michael Savage. Let's go to line three. Ron is listening on WTMA in South Carolina. Ron, you're up on the Savage Nation. Oh, hello, John. Nice Hi there. You this evening. Uh, you're doing a great job. Thank you very much. I, I, I didn't realize that uh, at some point the American people had elected the Obamas to royalty. <laughs> now, um, the queen over on the, you know, the big island over there. Uh, Prince Philip always received a stipend or something they would call it for his uh, quote unquote, you know, pocket money. Right. And Prince Charles, uh, not being king or anything, he receives money. And Prince Harry and Prince everybody else and the Lord and the Duke and the Lady and everybody, all the royalty. And Michelle Obama just needs a big old ermine robe. And uh, you know, a crown or the hair to go with. Well, it you know, Ron, Ron, how about thank you for the call. How about instead, if she wants to be paid, and we're talking about Michelle Obama and the president, they're talking that somehow that she should be paid as first lady. I, I we'll pay you, but then you're paying your transportation for the for the plane and the entertaining and and upkeep and the white. I mean, you can't have it both ways. Right now, I mean, you you have the the dream of living in the White House. Line four is Joe. Listening on KBET in Las Vegas, Joe, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Good afternoon, John. Thanks hey there. for my call. Uh, you know, uh, Miss Obama, she's the one that uh, didn't love her country until uh, recently, uh, as, as uh, maybe six years ago. But uh, what really gets me, uh, uh, really gets to me, is that where's everybody surprised? They're Democrats. All the Democrats, they were, they want, they say a lot that they want to do for this country. But you know what they're looking for? What's that? Bottom line for, for, for their money for themselves. That shows you the greed right there. So if they're quote unquote saying that they worrying about the poor and and everything else, they're worried about just the just the uh, the money for themselves. Thank you for the call, Joe. One eight five five four hundred Savage. Don't forget the website is michaelsavage.com. Where right now, a countdown to Mecca. You can pre-order it online. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and you're listening to the Savage Nation. Adult content, psychological nudity, listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. John DePietro sitting in for the one and only Dr. Michael Savage. You can be part of the program. Just dial 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Don't forget our website, michaelsavage.com. We're coming soon. That's right. You can pre-order Countdown to Mecca. 
by Michael Savage. Under the threat of a third world war, nothing matters except the mission. Order it now. It's available May 12th, but you can pre-order it right now. New thriller for the best-selling author, the one and only Dr. Michael Savage. You know, also at the website, don't forget, latest news and headlines. ISIS destroys Christian grave sites in Mosul. How about this story? Cameras on Texas-Mexico border capture steady stream of illegals with packages of drugs and guns. You have to look at that story. It is just amazing. You see the blatant coming across the borders and the cameras capturing all these illegals strolling over without a care in the world. And then there's this horrific story. Teacher allegedly knocked out cold by a student's mother. Would that have ever happened to you years ago? Would that have ever have happened to anyone that maybe attended Catholic school with the nuns? And then you can read the story of a teacher. And it's, it's very chilling when you see the teacher is literally laying on the floor, knocked out cold. A teacher allegedly attacked by a parent in the hall of a Long Island middle school. Disturbing surveillance photo. Knocked out cold. The teacher pummeled by a parent and a 14-year-old in West Hempstead. Sounded like I thought a parent would do something. But I knew something violent was going to happen, said the teacher. I warned them this time and again. The children have no respect for adults. Yes, I fear for my safety. They can't control the kids. Have you ever had a situation like that? Apparently the mother was angry about an incident where she claimed the teacher grabbed her 12-year-old daughter. Teacher called security, and the parent confronted her, and the mother went ballistic, put the teacher in a chokehold, shoved her into a wall, and then decked her. And then some kids, this is the story for the New York Post, including Mackenzie's daughter and a 14-year-old niece, started kicking the teacher and then knocking her out cold. Horrible. No respect. You know, if you're 14 or 12, this is what the mother does when she comes to the school. If you're a teacher, have you had a similar story? Whatever happened to, you know, most people, I'm sure if you're listening right now, I mean, most people, you you would be terrified if the teacher ever called your home and complained about how you're behaving. No longer. Now they immediately take the side of the child knocking the teacher out cold again you can read that story and more latest news and headlines i check it first thing every day right at the website it's michaelsavage.com well as everyone knows i mean obviously the race for president is heating up if you want to call up about a certain candidate certainly seems like former governor huckabee is going to get into the race and this talk obviously now hillary clinton is the front runner on the Democrat side, even though now apparently having a challenge from former Republican Senator Lincoln Chafee, the failed former governor of the state of Rhode Island. But you know what I have a problem with is Nancy Pelosi, again, this insistent that not that we should have the most qualified person, not we should have the person that has demonstrated the most leadership, has the best, you know, I hate the word vision, but some sense of what they could accomplish and do so we don't have a repeat of the past few years but listen to nancy pelosi and it's so telling this seemingly is the most important thing to her and why she supports hillary clinton what's important is what it would mean to elect a woman president of the united states it would be it's it's a very major consideration a very qualified woman to be president of the United States. Not just that she's a woman, but a very qualified. How would they feel if it was, well, we know the answer. I was going to say Sarah Palin. You know, that trumps it all. That is single-handedly the most important thing to a Nancy Pelosi. Do I don't get the sense that there's many women that agree with that. I, I don't think so. I think, I think people, I think want the most competent individual whether it be male or female but i don't think what do you think i don't think that that is 
the prerequisite of what pe- people want. What do you think? One, call in, 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. And then, of course, speaking of women, President Obama tried it as a joke, but actually threw out the concept that they've had it sounds to me like they have had discussions and that there's an angry white house because michelle obama feels that she should be paid as first lady that would never cross into my mind but as one one caller said if your friends are beyonce the kardashians and you're watching them acquire all this wealth and michelle obama figures you know I'm the bigger star, right? I mean, I'm the one that they have the montage at the Academy Awards before they announce Best Picture. I'm really, in her mind anyway, the biggest star. I should be making all this money. It would never occur to me that the first spouse of the United States should be paid. Just, I think that is unmitigated goal. What do you think? One. 855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go to line one. Charlie is listening on WFNR in Virginia. Charlie, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Well, thank you, John. Hi. Uh, Hi there. I, I mean, this has gotten so far out of hand. I mean, we go back to when uh, junior Senator Barack Obama got in, and immediately Michelle at the University of Chicago Hospital she gets a bump raise to three hundred and sixteen dollars and I mean three hundred and sixteen thousand nine hundred and sixty two dollars and that ended up being a patient dumping job. Uh and then of course we're footing the bill for Mrs. Robinson, Michelle's mother. They go all over the place. They're yep. waited on hand and foot. Every Wednesday night they've got party time at the White House. We're That's right. For all of this. That is exactly right. And Charlie, you would think that that would be not only enough, but more than enough, that you would never even dream of saying that not only is it enjoyable and overwhelming, that, like, who in their right mind would then actually complain that they're not being compensated financially for being the first lady? John, these people are of the left mind. Yes. Right mind. It's crazy. And I thank you for covering for Dr. Savage. I appreciate your work. And... Thanks to the Savage team. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charlie. One eight five five four hundred Savage. Doesn't that ring to you almost of some of the high priced athletes that we hear complaining about the money that they make, right? Whether it be whatever type of sport, complaining that they're only getting whatever it might be, sixteen million a year, eighteen million a year. It seems incomprehensible, yet they do complain or that they have to carry their own luggage or tired of signing autographs or don't want to go unless they're going to be paid for it. I mean, I think that's how it it comes off. Let's go to line two. Brendan is in Detroit listening on WJR. Brendan's on the Savage Nation. Hello, Brendan. Thank you, Big John. And you know what? If someone wants to marry someone and be a paid wife, they she multi-millionaires. We know they're already taken care of. The Trojan horse is this. In two years, you're going to have the jumbo dwarf Hillary in the White House being paid, folks. That the message is a little message in there, and it's for Hillary. That's their little thing for her. And here's the bottom line with New York. New York school system, there's nothing wrong with it that a million new school kids couldn't fix. No, call, no talk show host ever gives me a follow-up or ever gets into dialogue with me. I don't understand that, John. The biggest issue today affecting America is the illegal immigration issue and the legal immigration issue. This country is being flooded. I'm in the, I'm in the Midwest. I see it. I've been visited the Northeast. I've seen the way they're being flooded. That is the biggest issue. It will not be touched by any Republican candidate. They're all a bunch of cowards. They're selling us these guys as conservatives, and they're not really conservatives. Thank you for the call, Brendan. I don't know if it's going to be touched. It, it, it seems to be something that the presidential candidates uh, are are afraid of. I'll give you that. Or they, they're trying to walk a fine line on it. Line six, let's go to Pat, who's listening to the Savage Nation on KSFO in San Francisco. Pat, this is John DePietro. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Oh, hi, John. Um, as a woman, I do not want Hillary anywhere near near the White House. It's an embarrassment. 
she uh, can't even curtail her husband. Uh, she is nothing more than an extortionist, just like the Obamas. And I was going to make the same comment about uh, uh, Michelle's job in Illinois, where she got a big bump and raise uh, after Obama was uh, in the Senate. So she was an entitlement. And uh, But Pat, coming back to Hillary for just a moment, so you, you don't agree with Pelosi. You would not just vote for Hillary because she's a woman and you want the first female president. I don't. I don't want the first female president if they are inferior just because they're a woman. It, it, it's See, not the most important thing to you. I right. don't admire Hillary at all. I would yeah. never vote for her. <laughs> Thank you for the call, Pat. What about you folks? 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. This is John DePietro sitting in for the one and only Dr. Michael Savage. We'll continue with more. On the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets gold and silver. What's important is what it would mean to elect a woman president of the United States. It would be, it's, it's a very major consideration a very qualified woman to be president of the United States. Not just that she's a woman, but a very qualified. I'm not here to make any endorsements. I don't do politics in the Capitol. But I, um, you asked what, what it would mean, and I think it would mean a lot. I think it would mean a lot. That is Nancy Pelosi talking about how important it is to her to elect a woman president. As I said, I don't think they would feel the same way if it was Sarah Palin. But it's obviously different since it would look like it would be Hillary Clinton. I, I don't think that the majority of women feel that way. What do you think? This is John DePedro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, and you're listening to The Savage Nation, where you can call in 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Let's go to line three. Paula is listening in New Jersey. On WABC, Paula, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hi, John. How are you? Hi there. Very well, Paula. Hello. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank. You. Well, huge shoes to fill. And speaking of big shoes to fill, it looks like your governor is finally going to find his way to New Hampshire this weekend. Oh, spare me. <laughs> <laughs> finally. Let's not go there, please. Be careful if he enters the diner. That's for sure. <laughs> I know. Whoa, big guy. Let's just not go there. John, I'm calling in reference to um, both Hillary and Michelle and this whole woman thing and this whole we deserve this and we deserve that. Um, I want to tell you as a blue star wife and mother, and for those who don't know what that is, that is um, either a wife or a mother who has someone serving actively in the military. Um, and I, I don't say that with conceit. I say that with truly humble honor. Um, well, thank you for oh, your sacrifice. Through. Tremendous yeah. sacrifice, no, Paula. We go through, John. And, and I don't say that as a martyr. I say that people don't know what we go through. And we do it willingly. Now, with regard to both um, the princess in the White House and Hillary, I... I Hold on, before you go ahead, let me just ask you, when you talk about how it's impossible for people to know, you know, obviously I've spent over the years many a lot of time with military fit. Do you ever, are you ever able to fully relax and just let your mind go? Or you, you know, every time I, I talk to people, every time the phone rings, every time something happens, it's, it's your, you're constantly, not only are they over there, but in a way you're over there as well. Um, based on the fact that this time my husband is in a, a location where he's not, uh, he's not in Iraq this time, so I don't have the fear that I did last time. But what about when he was? <sighs> you know, um, you just, you, you just have to put yourself in, um, at least I did. I just had to put myself in a place of trusting in God that 
he was going to take care of my husband because otherwise you lose your mind and all you ever do is live in a state of neurosis. Yes. And I refused to live like that. I felt that that was dishonoring my trust in God and my trust in my nation. Yeah. You know, Paul, it's funny because many times if you've ever gone, and which you have, where the families gather when our men and women come back from overseas, and when I've, I've interviewed them and talked to them, they say, you know, what you're seeing and the emotional outbursts is just, it's exhaustion. And they're collapsing almost almost from relief because it, it, you don't even realize after a while how you're carrying it around in a constant worry that, in fact, because they're in harm's way. Uh, it, it, took, it took a terrible toll on us, and it took a terrible toll on us when we came back. When he yes. came back, I'll, I'll tell you something. Um, it took a toll on us that... Uh, I don't even want to talk about it, but that's okay. Okay. But you, uh-huh. you're not a Hillary fan. And just speak up just a little bit. I want to be able to hear every word. I would love to see a woman in the White House, but I only want to see a woman in the White House if this is the woman who can best see, serve our nation. This kind that's right. of entitlement makes me sick. Paula, entitlement is a good word. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. This is John DePietro sitting in. For Dr. Michael Savage, this is the Savage Nation. That is President Obama. Can you imagine the gall of complaining that First Lady Michelle Obama does not get paid to be the First Lady? You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're welcome to join the program. Just pick up the phone and call us at 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 7282. We have a great website, of course, michaelsavage.com. Latest news, headlines, and also your chance. Pre order Countdown to Mecca, the new book from Dr. Michael Savage, coming next month. Let's get back to your phone calls, though. Line five is Sharon, and she's listening to the Savage Nation on KSFO. Sharon, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, John. Hi there. Hi, John. I just had a horrible thought. Do you think all this money thing with Michelle that he's is could possibly be her introduction for running for president? Well, you know, it's interesting, Sharon, that you bring up a good point because I think it it shows into the insight that in a way Michelle almost regards herself already in a way as the president. As how come I'm not getting paid? You know, in her yeah. mind, why is her husband, Barack, why are you getting paid and I'm not getting paid? Can you imagine, Sharon, with everything going on, and these are the type of discussions that they're having behind closed doors, arguments, he storms off to the golf course, she insists on taking a different flight to the West Coast and constantly complaining that she has to go to Europe do you remember they went to Africa on a safari? Cost how much? All of that, Sharon. Can you imagine? You want to talk about never enough. It's never enough, despite having all of this, Sharon, and Michelle Obama actually complaining that she's not getting paid. Absolutely. It's just, I, I don't know. I just had a horrible thought, maybe with her introduction to be running for president, because I don't think. Hillary, the champion, as she calls herself, is that popular right now? I really don't think so. Right. I think. Thank you for the call. I think you're right, Sharon. You know, and I also think where Sharon's right is th- this was what Nancy Pelosi said the other day, and I want to preface it. If you really parse the words of Nancy Pelosi, she's basically saying that the most important thing to her and the most important thing to the voters should be to vote for Hillary because he's a woman. Let's hear it. This is Nancy Pelosi. What's important is what it would mean to elect a woman president of the United States. It would be, it's, it's a very major consideration. A very qualified woman to be president of the United States. Not just that she's a woman, but a very qualified. Does it really, really, really matter? This whole I like how she tries to qualify it that way. Of, of course, it has to be a very qualified woman, as long as it's, as long as it's a woman. Line two is Marie, 
who's listening to the Savage Nation on KBET in Las Vegas. Marie, this is John DePietro. Hello. Hello, John. Hello, Marie. I just want to make a statement. Since I had no intention of voting for Hillary Clinton, since you put that little uh, program about Miss Pelosi endorsing her, now I know for sure that I'm not going to vote for Hillary Clinton. And I think that every woman in the United States should think about it before they go to the polls. Hillary Clinton is not the person we need for a president the way our our United States is being handled right now. I think that would be a terrible thing. And Marie, how do you feel as a woman that Nancy Pelosi is trying to tell you, listen, you're a woman, Nancy Pelosi's a woman, you need to vote for a woman to be the president. No, that doesn't that doesn't do anything for me. We I don't even want a woman president to start with. This country needs a man and always has needed a man in the head of household and everything else in this country needs a man to, to if he's a right man to run us and that's what we need right Ma- now. Marie, thank you for the call. How about the most qualified individual? How about whoever it is that we truly feel is going to move things forward? But you go by that. Are you going to vote for an Elizabeth Warren, the senator from Massachusetts, the fake Indian? Or are you going to support to get the Clintons back into office? That whole mentality, I know how Nancy Pelosi tries to qualify it, but it's tough to get away from what the real underlying message is is that the most important thing to her is that a woman is elected. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-SAVAGE or 400-7282. Let's go out to Lee, who's listening on KSFO in San Francisco. Lee's up next on the Savage Nation. Go right ahead, Lee. Go ahead, Lee. Once, twice, Bill is on line nine in Connecticut listening on WDRC. Bill, this is John DePietro, and you're on the Savage Nation. Okay, thanks, John, for taking my call. I wanted to comment on um, the uh, uh, Governor Huckabee thinking of running for president. You mentioned something about that earlier in the program. Yes, it seems to be that he's uh, he's gearing up to announce he's going to run. I've, I've heard that. I'm a lifelong Republican. And uh, Governor Huckabee was a governor of uh, a lackluster governor of Arkansas. Certainly, not, not didn't distinguish himself in any way. And I'm afraid of having Huckabee as a nominee. First of all, he will never get the Republican nomination, and if he did get it, he could never win. He's a Christian minister, which you know here again, many wonderful Christians in the in the Christian faith uh, who belong to the Republican Party, and they're all good friends of mine because I'm act- an active Republican. But they will vote for him in the primary, and I believe that he stayed in the primary in 2008. And had he not stayed in the primary, uh, uh, Senator um, McCain of, of Arizona would not have gotten the nomination. He had no chance to win, and unfortunately, Huckabee staying in the election in, not, in that uh, primary for as long as he did, I think hurt the chances for us getting a, a candidate who could have beat Barack Obama. Governor, uh, uh, Senator uh, McCain made no effort to, to be in that election, and I was very disappointed, and I think Huckabee is part of the blame of that, to that whole fiasco. Well, if you remember, thank you for the call. He did, Huckabee did very well in Iowa, which is really what, what got him going. Uh, I tend to agree with you. I don't know. I mean, it's still very early. I don't know if he's my type of candidate either, but, but getting back to women in the news, I want to play for you cut one, a woman who's in the news right now is this Britt McHenry. She's a young woman. She's a reporter, granted a sports reporter, but a reporter who was upset that she had her car towed. Have you heard this? And even though there's a camera rolling and she works for a national broadcast outlet and she's upset that they towed her car, she starts to berate the woman who's very calm, who's only doing her job for the tow. She didn't tow it. She's just there where then you pay it and then you get your car back. Listen to this young reporter and talking about and trying to berate the clerk of that's why I have a degree and you don't. So upset. And even the clerk even says, listen, ma'am, just so you know, 
Fine, you're on TV. See that video? You're on camera right now. Should have right there put, even gave her a heads up on it. Listen to this Britt McHenry. I'm in the news, sweetheart. That's I will face to this place. Okay, okay that's, that's fine, and I'll play your video, so carefully. I'll play the video. That's why I have a degree in right. I wouldn't work in some other place like this. No. It makes sense to call and being here. Mm-hmm. Well, let's get you out of here quickly. Yep, that's all you care about, is just taking people's people. money. Yeah. With no education. Yeah. No skill set. Just want to clarify that. Yeah. Do you feel good about your job? So I could be a college dropout and do the same thing? Why yeah. because I have a brain and you don't? Looks like it. Maybe if I was missing some teeth, they would hire me, huh? Yeah, I feel like you had to touch your roots up a little bit. Oh, like yours? Yeah. They look so <laughs> stunning. Because yeah. I'm on television yeah. and you're on right. a trailer, honey. Have a nice Lose some weight, baby yeah. girl. Absolutely disgraceful, despicable. Says a lot. Not not only someone that treats someone merely doing their job. You're the one that was in the wrong. But even continues to go on and behave that way. Even when it's pointed out to them that they're, they're being recorded and that they're on camera. And ESPN suspended her for one week. What a disgrace. You have a degree, you'd never know it. That's why I have a degree and you don't. That's why I'm on television, as if that's such like a a big thing. Talk about the entitlement. But getting back to this whole business of Pelosi now, trying to dictate to women. You know, I, I think it's the wrong message. I think that's the wrong message. And I think the president trying to make an argument that poor Michelle doesn't get paid to be the first lady. I don't, I don't think that resonates with the general public. Boy, I'd love to hear them try to make that argument to people when they meet various people out on the campaign trail or just how difficult it is for people that are are trying to just scrape by. Let's go to line three. Jackie is listening in Alabama on WVNN. Jackie, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi. It's it's a pleasure to be on. Thank you very much, Jackie. You know, as far as uh, Hillary Clinton and Nancy Pelosi, I'm wondering as far as, you know, other than just hiding from the actual people and the voters, has she said anything about policy, about platform, about anything? And then Nancy Pelosi, does she think that women are just stupid because, like, that we don't know the issues? You know, is that, when you're trying to determine, Jackie, who are you going to vote for? I mean, don't don't you think, doesn't it come down to who is the most qualified? And if you're going to pick whatever, even a local election where you are, if it if it happens to be the most qualified person is a man, then you'd vote For the man, if the most qualified person is a woman, you'd vote for the woman. And also, Jackie, isn't that what you would teach your children? They're constantly talking about children and sons and daughters. But do you just automatically, you know, go, boom, and check off, well, there's the woman. i got to vote for her. I mean, do do, I don't think, do you think people vote that way? Well, I think a lot of people don't vote that way. But you've got got people that just listen to whatever the media puts out there, the mainstream media, and they don't even think, they, they think, oh, I like his tie, so I'm going to vote for him. So they're just stupid. <laughs> well, you just thank you for the call, Jack. You wonder if, in a way, if Pelosi is just trying to play into that. Let's go to line two. Eric is listening on KSFO in San Francisco. Eric, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello. Thank you very much for having me. Very welcome, Eric. Go right ahead. Uh, first off, just uh, my main thing, uh, talking about the standby you keep playing of Nancy Pelosi. Now, it is a, a very respectful issue that is very important to our society right now, but in terms of electing the next leader of the free world, you need to base it off more than sex or race. And it is important, but they need the history, the the knowledge, amongst many other things, and you just can't make that your number one voice or reason of voting for who you vote for. Well, don't you think, Eric, that's in a way kind of like dumbing down the voter to try to almost send a message that, you know, forget about the issues, forget about qualifications, trying to draw people in of let's just focus on electing the first female president? Well, if that's the stance you're going to take, we may as well elect the very first homeless man. That'll, that's, uh, that's the same thing if we're going to throw out uh, you know the other aspects of... We already had the first homeless man. It was Bill Clinton. Remember, he didn't have a house when he was president. Thank you for the call, Eric. 
1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. More of your phone calls coming up. This is the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, where you can call in one 855 400 Savage is the phone number, 1-855-400-7282. Don't forget to check the website, michaelsavage.com, latest news, headlines, and also your chance to pre-order online, Countdown to Mecca, the new Michael Savage book. It's coming out. It's going to be available May 15th, but you can pre-order it right now online at michaelsavage.com. Line one is John in Connecticut listing to the Savage Nation on WDRC. John, welcome. Go right ahead. Hi, how you doing? Very well, John. I think what the Democrats are doing is um, trying to stoke resentment in each of these different groups, a, a kind of um, identity politics. And so, and then the, you know, the person say that they they're a woman and they, they, as a woman, suddenly they feel resentment because they're not getting, getting, paid or they they or we you know you just pick the different group like with the the blacks and the police and the homosexuals and the marriage thing well let's just keep it focused on exactly what it is and that is Nancy Pelosi trying to say that regardless of how she couches it that in her mind the most important thing is that it be a female president regardless now she may say the a qualified one but um but that seems to be the most important thing to her in selecting a candidate. Line six is Michael. He's listening on KKOH in Reno. Michael, this is John DePietro. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you, John. You're doing a great job. Thank you, Michael. Um, eight years ago, we had to have a black man in office. Look where that got us. Are we going to go down that same route again here in 2016 that we need a woman president this time please let's be real let's let's start to quantify what is a qualified presidential candidate and john shouldn't it be someone that who's articulate well-spoken has a mapped out plan on how we're exactly going to get this done yes i would think it's most qualified whoever it may be you have been listening to the savage nation 